Hello and welcome to the 12th video in this series. In this video we're going to start setting up the OAND API class. You can see I've already made a file called OAND underscore API dot pi and I've made a short start on the OAND API class. There's nothing new here, you've seen it all before inside notebooks. We've got requests, pandas, defs and utils. And the only thing we're doing when we create our API is we're making a new session. So we're going to set out four functions inside this class for now. We're going to set out fetch instruments, get instruments data frame, save instruments, and fetch candles. At the bottom, I'm just going to add the if name equals main so we can quickly test out how the functions work. And inside here, we can make a new instance of our class. So you should have a skeleton that's looking something like this. The first one we're going to work on is the fetch candles here, where we take in a pair name, the number of candles we want, and the granularity. So you can probably find somewhere in, I think it was in the save candles notebook somewhere, you can actually find most of the fetch candles code inside here. So we're going to build up our URL, we're going to build up our parameters. So we've got our count, our granularity, and we're going to get all three prices. Exactly as we've done before, we'll get our response, and then we're going to return our response with the status code and the JSON response. So we've gone very quickly through that, but there's really nothing new inside here at all. Make sure pair name is pair name here, otherwise things won't work. And down the bottom here, we can quickly test this out to make sure things are running properly. So we'll type print and then api.fetchcandles and let's fetch the Euro knock, so the Norwegian Krona. We'll fetch 50 of them and the four hour time frame. why not? So over into the console then, let's just execute our new script, oanderinscreapi.py. And good, we can see that we're getting some candles here. I'm just going to take a quick look at the times and see that they're four hours apart. And yes, they seem to be four hours apart. So it looks like we're getting our list of candles and our candle fetching is working okay. Good. The next one to work on is slightly more involved. That's fetching the instruments from the API. So again, you've got this code already in your notebook. So I'm going to paste it in to keep the, the time down. So we just make up our URL with our account ID and we get our response and then we return our response and also our JSON. So let's have a check of this one in the console as well, just down the bottom here. I'm going to print API and fetch instruments. We don't need any arguments here. Into the console here, let's run the file again. And you can see that we're getting all of the instruments from the API, so that's working. So the next function then is this one where we actually want to get the data frame of the instruments once we've got the instruments fresh from the API. So here then we're going to get our status code and our data which is going to be fetching the instruments on the instance of the class that we have. And now what we want to say is we want to say that if our status code is equal to 200, then as we did in the notebook, we'll do df is equal to pd.dataframe from dict data and the instruments key. Once we've done that, then we can return our data frame where we select the specific columns that we actually want from our data frame. The only other thing to do on the end there is just put else and we'll just return none in the case that uh, this doesn't work properly. We can go down the bottom here and just test this one out as well. So we'll say that our data frame is equal to API.getInstrumentsDataFrame and then we can print dataframe.head which is just the first five rows of the data frame into the console and run the script and we can see that we've got our data frame properly. So that's working as well, good. Now the last thing we want to do, and I guess you can guess how this is going to work, so we've had it in a notebook, is we want to save our instruments to the PKL file. So I've deleted mine already from the hierarchy because I want to recreate it here as a little test. So we'll say that our data frame is equal to our get instruments data frame from the current instance of the class. And now importantly, we have to ask if the data frame is not none, so that means that things actually worked okay then we can say our data frame dot two pickle utils dot get instruments data file name. And that should be all we need to do to create our new pickle. So again, down the bottom, API save instruments, and let's just go to the console and run that and see if we get the file. So I've run the console, there was nothing to see, and it's generated the instruments dot pickle here. Good, so we've come quite a long way then. We've managed to create a class for the Oanda API, which can get us some candles if we need and can also update the tradable instruments anytime we need into a file. We've created ourselves an instrument class and now we've mapped out some basic functionality. We can start setting about analyzing the actual price data and building some trading strategies. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.